It was all but confirmed that Shanks is a descendant of the Figarland family, making him a celestial dragon. But there is also a popular theory that Shanks is the son of Rox D. Zebek. And I'm here to tell you that it's very likely that both of these things are true. That Shanks is the child of Rox de Zebek and a celestial dragon woman of the Figarland family. This simple merging of ideas would explain everything about the Battle of God Valley and why the island and Rox himself were erased from history. See, Film Red offered one bit of canon information, which was the heavy implication that Shanks was part of the Figarland family. And with the recent reveal that the Figarland family resided in God Valley, suddenly the story of Rox and the Figarlands comes together. Today I'm going to be breaking down what really happened in God Valley, connecting the pieces of Rox, Shanks, the Figarland family, and lastly, the Pirate King Gold Rogers pivotal role. But before we get into it, make sure to subscribe. So to begin with, it was confirmed that Shanks was, as an infant, found by Roger in a treasure chest in God Valley. Roger took Shanks in from there and raised him as part of the crew. Now that we've learned that the Figarlands lived on God Valley and Shanks being a Figarland was practically confirmed in Film Red, it seems to make straightforward sense why the baby Shanks would be at God Valley. However, what doesn't make sense is why Shanks would be left behind in a treasure chest. Why was a baby celestial dragon of one of the most important celestial dragon lineages, the Great Figarland family, abandoned at God Valley? dumped in a treasure chest of all places. You might say that maybe Shanks' mother was so scared during Rox's attack that she hid her baby in a treasure chest and then she died in the subsequent conflict. However, if that were the case, then after Roger took Shanks in, why was there never any effort by the world government to get the baby back? After all, the Celestial Dragons clearly knew about Shanks. The Gorosei are clearly aware that he is a Celestial Dragon, and that is also very likely a big part of why Shanks was allowed to travel up to Marijua. So Shanks wasn't some baby that they thought disappeared or died during the Battle of God Valley. They have clearly been aware of him, and that he had been taken in by Roger. So if Shanks was a known Celestial Dragon baby that was just out there in the world, then wouldn't the Celestial Dragons have immediately tried to pick him up from Roger. I don't even necessarily mean by attacking Roger since the Marines already did that on a regular basis. I mean even just offering a straightforward deal to get back the captive Celestial Dragon. We already know that the world government does deals with pirates all the time, for weapons or to get back soldiers, etc. And considering that any individual Celestial Dragon is basically considered to be the single most valuable thing imaginable by the world government, there is no reason that they would not have done everything in their power to get it back from Roger. I mean, there's a reason that marine admirals are sent in literally just for touching a celestial dragon. The celestial dragon's individual value comes higher than anything else in the world. If there was a celestial dragon, any celestial dragon, stranded out there in the world, then it is an absolute guarantee that a tremendous effort would be made to get them back either by military force or by bargain. So why then did they not try to get back a precious celestial dragon baby, the heir of the Figarland tribe, from Roger? I mean, Roger literally just fought on the Celestial Dragon's side against Rox. You would think it would be a fairly easy communication to ask for their baby back. I mean, why the hell would Roger even want to be raising a Celestial Dragon baby in the first place? You would think that literally the very next time that Garp or Sengoku were sent after the Roger Pirates, as was implied to be a very regular occurrence, that they would be instructed to ask for the Celestial Dragon baby back. In which case, Roger would probably say, oh, it's a celestial dragon baby, here you go, take it, and that would be it. Why on earth would Roger selfishly refuse to return a baby to its family just to take the responsibility to raise it himself? We may not know a lot about Roger, but I don't think it would be in the nature of Roger if the family of the baby was asking for their child back and Roger would just repeatedly say, no, I'm keeping it myself, for no reason. I mean, yeah, maybe Roger doesn't like the Celestial Dragons, but that's a huge leap from literally stealing a baby from them and keeping it for no reason. If Shanks' family asked Roger for their baby back, would Roger really be so cold-hearted as to say, no, you can't have your baby back, it's mine now? I feel like all of this only makes sense if the Celestial Dragons never asked for their baby back. I feel like Roger found Shanks 
took him on board the ship and continued to raise him because the baby was truly abandoned and there was nowhere else for it to go. I think the Celestial Dragons deliberately abandoned the infant and did not ask for it back. And again, this would not have been because the Celestial Dragons didn't know about the baby, as the Celestial Dragons have clearly been aware that Shanks is a Figarland family member that was simply out there in the wild. So the real question is, why would the Celestial Dragons abandon a Celestial Dragon baby? The simple answer is, if that baby was deemed to have no place among the Celestial Dragons. And the only reason that would be the case would be if that baby was not a pure celestial dragon. So with that thought, let's take a step back and now look at the story of Rox, as much as we know of him so far. So what I find interesting is that, for years, readers have been infatuated with the idea of characters having a forbidden romance with a celestial dragon. For example, a common long-running fan theory was that Monkey D. Dragon loved some celestial dragon, and that after she gave birth to Luffy, she was executed for her sins, which in turn made Dragon become a revolutionary. Now we know that no such story is possible, as Dragon was actually already a revolutionary well before Luffy was born. Dragon turning against the world government had nothing to do with Luffy, or some taboo love affair that broke the rules of the celestial dragons. However, I wonder if that same idea of a forbidden celestial dragon romance actually does apply to One Piece, but to a very different character, Rox D. Zebek. He was, essentially, the world's greatest terrorist before Dragon. Rox was a man who vowed to fight against the Celestial Dragons, and ultimately died in battle trying to attack them at God Valley, the land housing the Figarlands. Now, while Gold Roger was a similarly infamous pirate to Rox, unlike Gold Roger, there was something about Rox in particular that the world government viewed as extremely taboo. In fact, there was something about Rox and his story that was so taboo that it actually actually needed to be covered up. As much as Gold Roger became an infamous name, the world government never tried to hide his existence. In fact, they were proud to make a big show of his public execution. Of course, they couldn't have known that Roger was going to yell about the One Piece and cause the Great Age of Pirates at his execution, so in hindsight the world government made a mistake with that. But I'm saying that prior to Roger's final moments, nothing that Roger had done in his long, infamous, tenured career as a pirate was so taboo that it warranted the world government actually trying to erase his name from history. However, Rox had apparently broken the world's taboos in such a way that the Celestial Dragons didn't want anyone to know about him, to learn about him, to find out about him at all. In fact, it was determined that the history of God Valley itself needed to be erased. This was the major question mark that we were left with by the end of Sengoku's explanation of the God Valley incident, a question that the characters themselves repeatedly voice, why? Why was it so important to cover up this bit of history, everything related to rocks and God Valley? Something about all of this must have been so uncomfortable to the Celestial Dragons, so disturbing that they needed to hide it from the entire world. Well, we all know the single most important tenet of the Celestial Dragons. The one thing that must be upheld above all else, which is that they are gods, and therefore above mortals. Their very blood is sacred and holy. They are divine beings, and everyone else is less than dirt in comparison. They do not mix with humans. In fact, to even breathe the same air as a human is unthinkable, which is why they literally walk the earth in protective suits and air bubbles. So what would be the single most unholy, unspeakable, sinful, shameful act to a celestial dragon? if one of their own actually bred with one of those disgusting mortals. If a child were born from holy celestial dragon blood mixed with dirty commoner blood, well, that would be an absolutely unthinkable abomination. That is something that should simply never exist. And it wouldn't have been just any commoner either. It would be the scum of the earth, the infamous pirate and a member of the D tribe, Rox D. Zebek. That is something that the world could never know about. For all of the people of the world to hear about the pure, holy celestial dragons actually happily mixing their blood with dirty pirates as though they are one and the same, it would shatter the status quo and the godlike image that the celestial dragons desperately try to uphold. Yes, a child like that, well, its existence would be the ultimate taboo to the celestial dragons. And so what happens with this child? 
Maybe it's born in secret at God Valley. Maybe it's not a secret, but the mother, as a celestial dragon, has enough influence that she is allowed to keep it alive. It's impossible to guess the details, but we could easily guess that this woman and the infant Shanks would never be allowed to be with Rox. And so why then did the attack on God Valley happen? Maybe it was Rox and his crew going on a rampage in the land of the celestial dragons, with Rox motivated by revenge against the celestial dragons for separating him from his wife and child, perhaps even aiming to get them back. Now, Rox was still not necessarily a good person, everything that we know about him suggests that he was more like the previous era's Blackbeard, but even villains can love. However, that doesn't mean that Rox wasn't ruthless in his pursuit, as it sounds like both Celestial Dragons and their innocent slaves were in danger of being wiped out in Rox's rampage. And that is, of course, where Roger stepped in. Who knows why Roger was there, or why Roger chose to fight against Rox, but a safe bet would be that protecting the slaves was at least part of the reason. At the end of the day, Rox was defeated and killed, and his crew was split up. But then we are still left with the child, with a dead father, and whose mother potentially died in the conflict as well. As such, the baby is ultimately left abandoned, as unwanted, as an abomination by the remaining Celestial Dragons, left behind in a treasure chest. After all, the Celestial Dragons would not take an impure, tainted child born of mortal blood back to Marijua with them. As we know from Doflamingo, the moment that one is considered to be mortal, they lose Celestial Dragon status. But Roger finds the child and takes the baby back on board the ship himself. The Celestial Dragons are clearly aware of its existence, but they never ask for it back. The child of a pirate can stay with pirates for all they care. Now, if all this sounds like too many assumptions, well, if you put it all together, it makes for a fairly straightforward answer to a myriad of mysterious questions. The world government wanted two things erased from history, both Rox's existence and God Valley's existence. And the only surviving major clue that came out of the entire incident was a mysterious baby that had the blood of celestial dragons, but was strangely abandoned by them and allowed to be taken in by a lowly pirate. The simplest answer is that the baby itself is the key. The world government would never want the story of one of its celestial dragons, the holy beings far above mere mortals, to have spawned a child with the world's worst criminal, Rox. After the great battle, the entire story needed to be erased. No one could find out about this God Valley incident because the natural question would be, why? The same question we readers had, the same question all the Marines had, why did this battle happen? And that is simply too dangerous of a question to be raised because it would unveil too unsavory of a truth. A disgusting secret that would gravely hurt the reputation of the gods. Better to say the battle never existed, the island never existed, and the man at the center of it all, Rox, never existed. And that way there is no stain on the Celestial Dragon's name. It also solves the simple mystery of why the Celestial Dragons would be fully aware that one of their own was out there in the seas by himself being raised by a pirate, but the Celestial Dragon still never bothered to try and get that baby Celestial Dragon back. The simple answer again is that it would be because the baby baby was deemed to not be a celestial dragon. Now, beyond all that, this idea also continues the pattern of legendary figures in One Piece having significant children. Pretty much every legendary figure in One Piece, Roger, Garp, Kaido, Big Mom, Dragon, they have notable children. Since One Piece spans multiple generations, it is rare that Oda doesn't give someone from the old generation a notable child in the new generation. He loves playing with the similarities and differences between parent and child, the types of people they are, and the decisions that they make. You have Roger and Ace, of course, but also Kaido and Yamato, Big Mom and Katakuri, Garp and Dragon, and by extension, Dragon and Luffy. The only notable legendary figure so far to not have a confirmed biological child is Whitebeard, and that's because that was kind of the point. That Whitebeard chose instead to create his own family of countless sons. Now, Rox was introduced to us as this legendary pirate, second only to Roger. I think there is a very decent chance that Oda is waiting on one of his classic parental lineage bombshells. And along those lines, one of Oda's absolute favorite writing decisions is to establish some sort of contrasting moral path or character choice between parent and child. Yamato is the child of Kaido, but stands against everything Kaido stands for, choosing the righteous path in the face of his selfish oppression. Katakuri is the opposite of Big Mom. While she is the most heartless and cruel mother in the world, as well as being very rash and impulsive, Katakuri is the ideal older brother. Wise, mature, caring for his family, protecting them, acting purely selflessly for their sake. While Garp is the ultimate marine, Dragon actively fights against the world government and everything 
that it stands for, working to tear down the very establishment that Garp upholds. Ace similarly rejected Roger and everything that Roger stood for, choosing to live life in defiance of his father's legacy. Really, Luffy and Dragon are the only significant parent-child pair that break this pattern. As Luffy does seem remarkably similar to Dragon in outlook and desires, even if Dragon is more deliberate with the path that he has taken. But beyond that, the contrast between parent and child is a classic staple of Oda's writing, frequently making the children of these legendary old generation figures the exact opposite in many regards from their parents. And so that brings us back to Rox and Shanks. If Rox Dizabek was the most disruptive, violent pirate to ever walk the seas, threatening the very balance of the world, then would it not be fitting if his son turned out to be Shanks, the exact opposite? the most pacifistic, peacekeeping great pirate that we've ever had, a kind-hearted force for good in the world. And lastly, that brings me to the single most compelling reason to me personally behind why this idea of Shanks being Rox's son fits so well. One of the absolute most important recurring ideas in One Piece is that a child is born pure and free from the sins of its parents. That was the story of Ace, after all. Born the son of the most infamous pirate in history, and yet Ace did not inherently bear any of the sins of Roger. Ace was his own man through and through. Roger is the man that first expresses this message, that a son does not bear the sins of his father. What if that was written in because what Roger is experiencing is cyclical? What if Roger himself took in a baby that was the son of a similarly infamous evil pirate on paper, supposedly the worst criminal in the world? rocks, as well as a celestial dragon who themselves are generally the worst people in the world. And yet, Shanks grew up to be one of the noblest and most kind-hearted characters in all of One Piece. If Roger took in a child of tainted evil blood and raised him well, then so too could this idea continue on, with Roger asking Garp to take in a child of tainted evil blood and raise him well. So with all that being said, do you believe that Shanks is the son of rocks? Shanks D. Figarland, perhaps? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, then definitely like and subscribe. And you can get my extended theories and predictions on the Shanks and Rocks connection on my exclusive podcast by supporting me on Patreon. Just hit the link in the description below.